outfits really do feel basic. These three people are going to completely different parties. I think that they could have tried a little bit harder. recognize me my name is neon noir i'm a half italian half canadian drag queen so usually i would be in drag but i am trying to get you these videos sooner than normal so i've decided for all stars 9 specifically i will be doing them out of drag but don't worry i will be coming back to you back in drag as i'm filming more stuff tomorrow to just keep on giving you more content baby but enough about that if you're new here go ahead and hit that subscribe button today we are playing my favorite game Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 9, Episode 4, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This week, the queens are giving us makeovers. And that is right. We got firefighters coming in and they are giving them a drag makeover. But this isn't any ordinary makeover challenge. This is also a girl group challenge. That is right. We got two challenges in one. We got a girl group. We got lyrics. We got choreography and we got makeovers. But then again, we are here to rate the fashion. So we will be breaking down these makeovers specifically. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who failed into obscurity. First up, we got The Hoses. The Hoses is made up of Vanessa Vanjie Mateo, Roxy Andrews, and their contestant, Valerie Valentine. First up, we are going to be looking at these as a girl group because they are a group, but we will also be talking about them individually and talking a little bit about that makeover. So first things first, these queens were really intelligent because they definitely look like a group. They are all coming out in pink with this sequence fabrics, and that is Roxy's Andrews a Smart Thinking. She decided, you know what, we might have to do a makeover challenge, so let me bring some extra fabric to, you know, zhuzh this up. And thank God she did because it makes them look like a cohesive unit. Yes, they all have a little bit of different silhouettes, a little bit of different things going on, but they feel together. But we have to look specifically at Miss Valerie because that is the makeover girl. And honestly, she looks stunning. I mean, would we expect anything less? These are really high caliber drag queens making over somebody. So of course they're gonna have good drag, good hair, and good makeup artistry to do a good job. So I didn't expect anything less, especially not from somebody like Roxy Andrews. So to no surprise, she looks great. Now, as a unit, I will say that I was a little bit disappointed. I do think that it was great that they were cohesive, but all the outfits really do feel basic. You can tell that they weren't made with a lot of time or with a big fashion designer because they're all really simple silhouettes and that shows on the runways. It is a pink dress with some sparkly fabric, which you can't really go wrong with, but you can also really go super right with, you know what I mean? All in all, this is a okay look, but because of cohesion and makeover, I'm gonna go ahead and give them both a bow. <laughs> Next up, we got Meow Meow Mix, which is made up of Plastique Tiara, Georges, and their partner, Angelique. And they decided to go with this more Powerpuff Girls fantasy. That is right, one's in blue, one's in pink, one's in green. When they were in the workroom and talking about that this was the idea they were gonna go with, I was a little bit concerned because Powerpuff Girls isn't necessarily a girl group and it isn't necessarily a lot of people's initial reference. But as soon as they came out, they worked. It worked, they looked cohesive together and they came together. What you can clearly see that they did, which was smart, was that Plastique had her look, Georges had her look, and they both took pieces of their individual looks and put it on Angelique. And they did it in this green and black sort of color combination, so it kind of works. Angelique ends up having sort of the same fur boots uh, and fur jacket that Plastique Tiara has, but she also has like the same rope detailing and fabric that Georges has. So that ties them together. They are literally tied together by this one person. They also matched it with great hair to put a whole look together. On top of that, Angelique looks amazing. On the last one, I said Valerie looked great, but Angelique is like a next level fish. And I'm like, girl, and this is your first time in drag? Good luck trying to do that again, because you ain't. This is top perfection. 
and amazing hair if I might add myself. And as if that wasn't enough, they decided to just add that little uh, decal of their name on each one of the garments to kind of tie it all together and make it match Plastique's dress. And I thought that was a smart little touch and it also makes it feel like a unit. Because you could see somebody doing that if they want to be like, girl gang, all in all, it's giving Spice Girls, it's giving Powerpuff Girls, and it's definitely giving bow. <laughs> It's the Pussycat Hose, and the Pussycat Hose is made up of Chanel and Jiria and their partner, Natasha Bradley. And these people are coming together? I got some opinions. So first up, let's talk about the makeover. Obviously, they did a great job. But again, are we surprised? You had Chanel on there doing makeup, and Chanel's makeup is stamped. Whether you like Chanel style or not, that is your opinion. But the one thing you cannot criticize her on is that beat face. And she did that exact face on her partner and her partner turned it out. They did the big hair and the iridescent outfits. The thing that I'm having a lot of trouble with is the outfits. I think that these three people are going to completely different parties. I feel like they've been pulled out of completely different wardrobes and they do not look like a unit. I guess the, the only thing that's tying them together is maybe the color scheme and definitely the heels. I do not know if this necessarily makes a girl groove. I think that they could have tried a little bit harder. We already know this is quite a bit of a challenge because already trying to dress somebody uh, when you don't know what size person that person is gonna be is already quite difficult. But then to make a cohesive unit is even more challenging. If they were at least all in the same color and then did different silhouettes, you can kind of say it's like the sporty spice to the baby spice, you know what I mean? But this was just not jiving because you can see that they were trying to be together it just wasn't landing um, then when you start looking at the individual garments it definitely feels that they've been more pulled out of Chanel's wardrobe and I say that because it feels over the top I think one of the things that they could have done is mixed and match some pieces for example uh, Natasha could have lost his collar and added some pink boa I think that would have helped and had they all been in the same color let's say pink it would have helped but the way it is today, it doesn't work. And despite the great makeover, it is still gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's the Hose Dragus, which is made up of Nina West, a Got Mick, and their partner, Anita Blaze. And they are coming out in these sort of like 60s, 70s inspired dresses with this black hair. Now, I was a little bit surprised that they decided to go with more of Nina Styles, which is a sort of like camp 60s aesthetic, as opposed to Gottmik style, because Gottmik is the fashion queen of the season. I'm going to assume that this was probably because Nina had items that probably fit this contestant a little bit better, and honestly, we know that Gottmik can pull off anything and make it look great, and, and this is what happens with it. One of the other things that they are doing really well is that they all decided to go with black hairstyles, which brings in that little piece of Gottmik into it. Now, is it really got make? Mm, questionable. I mean, it's just black hair at the end of the day, but it does make them feel like a unit. And that is the important part here. Um, they all have different patterns going on. They have all different silhouettes going on, but they feel like a unit and they feel like a girl group. Now, probably a girl group from like the 50s or 60s, because I can see them doing some like, dee, 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 but I can't really see them being like pop stars today but it works for a makeover challenge. The garments look good. They're very sparkly. They have a lot of pattern on them and they fit well. Uh, the makeover is great. You can see that Gottmik did the makeup because Honey turned it out. Now I do feel like Anita does look more like Nina and maybe that's just because of the size of them, but also because of the hair. So if I was to change one thing, I would have gotten rid of Nina's hairstyle, but probably done something a little bit more Gottmik with the hair, a little bit edgier, a little bit more punky. But considering Anita's size, it would have to be a big wig. That or I think that Gottmik should have went with a big hair as well. So then it would have just helped them unite just a little bit more. All in all, is this a bad look? No, no it's not. I think it's actually really successful. Though not my favorite, still successful. And that is why they are still gonna get a bow. And with only eight contestants and a girl group challenge, that is it for this episode. I do think this was an interesting take on a makeover, mainly because we got both a makeover and a girl group put together. 
I don't know how I feel about it. Actually, I do. I don't really like this idea. Uh, I see where they were going with it. But what I love about makeovers is the stories. I love to see the transformation. And with only eight queens, you could have given them all a contestant. Now we only got four and it just feels like a little bit disappointing and short and really wasn't doing it for me. But hey, that's the episode. But enough about that. Let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So my drab of the week this week has to go to the oh. Pussycat Hose, which was Chanel and Jiria and their contestant. But I chose them because they got my only drab. They didn't really match. And honestly, everybody had great makeovers. So that was the only criteria I can go by. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... Now mix. Yes, I know this might be a little bit of surprise to everybody, but I love the Powerpuff Girls vibes. I like that they all had their individual personalities. It gave me a little bit of that Spice Girls vibes. They weren't necessarily carbon copies of each other, but they definitely look like a girl group. Not necessarily a family, but a girl group. And a girl group was the challenge. And I felt like you got a little bit of each one of them in their personalities. And that's why they got my fab of the week. And... Let's not forget that amazing makeover. Oof, and that is it for this episode, y'all. What did you think? Do you agree or disagree with my opinion? Are you okay with me doing these out of drag? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next episodes. Bye-bye.